Hello, this is Andrew Stibbards with Sunset Learning Institute, here to do some quick exam prep for the CCNA security certification. Uh, we've gotten some requests, there's been some chatter about uh, prepping for that exam, for the, the course material, the content, and there's a lot of good questions out there about what official resources are available and what other resources are recommended because as we come to the end of this certification's lifetime, we're about to see some updates coming from Cisco. Uh, how can we achieve, how can we earn that certification um, when there's been some updates going on? Uh, so let's take a look. Let's, let's go over some of the exam details and then we'll talk about some recommendations. So let me start uh, sharing my slides out here. Hide that video panel. So what we're looking at here just uh, like I said, we're doing some exam prep. This is for the CCNA, CCNA security certification and the accompanying course is IINS, the Implementing Cisco Network Security course. So just keep that in mind, IINS, CCNA, that's the exam and the cert together. So what's going on here? So for the exam itself, it is exam number 210-260 IINS. So just make sure when you go to schedule, you register for the correct exam. Now we do have a deadline coming up. That'll be February 23rd, 2020. Now I'm recording this video on October 15th. So we still have several months before that deadline, but why do you care? Cisco has announced an update and is updating all of their training curriculum. They were getting rid of old certifications, they're creating new certifications. So the CCNA security exam is going to disappear. But if you pass the exam, if you earn this cert before that cutoff, February 23rd, you will automatically be granted the new CCNA when it comes out and then attached to your Cisco profile will be a training badge for having earned this certification when it did exist. So for the sake of job, job qualifications, for the sake of certification, a certification, uh, it is still worth it to go ahead and get this cert. You can still reference it. The skills are still applicable moving forward. Uh, this is the standalone exam. There's only the one exam, the CCNA, or CCNA security. You don't have to worry about taking multiple courses, multiple exams, one course, one exam. You get 90 minutes. And as of the last time I verified, okay, this was in the last 48 hours. So the passing score was around 860, well, 860 out of 1,000. I put a note there, Cisco does reserve the right to adjust that. Uh, you'll see the passing score, the reported passing score be higher or lower depending upon how long a cert's been out, how many people are passing it. But as of now, it's in 86% is required to pass the exam. So that's pretty, you know, 86%, that's a passing score. And you get about 60, 70 questions and you get all three types. You get your classic multiple choice, pick one out of four, pick three out of eight. You get your drag and drop questions. They give you a pile of options. You have to put them in the correct order. And there are simulations. Now you might notice there, I've got that little warning label. So the warning is for the simulations. This is first piece of uh, tips, and chick, tips and tricks prep here. On the CCNA security uh, exam, there's some simulations. Now I have to say this correctly. I have to phrase this correctly so I don't get in trouble because uh, I can't tell you exactly what's on the exam, but there are some simulations where they will test you on the ASA interface. And they're looking at you being able to configure some of the same options that we configure in class, like firewall, stateful inspection, uh, creating access lists, so some of the same stuff. And if, uh, there's nothing new there. They, I'm gonna show you some of the exam topics. They're gonna Tell you about that, but here's the warning. Here's why you care. There, in the simulator, there is a known issue where when you click on something, it doesn't always register as being clicked or it doesn't save the state as being clicked. Remember this in the exam, it's not a full ASA simulation. It's, a, it's not a lightweight, lightweight virtual firewall in the exam. It's a simulator. So it's a graphical interface that looks like an ASA, but it's really not. So that graphical interface sometimes has issues. So here's what you're gonna do. Take the exam. When you get to a simulation, 
and you're looking at applying tools and applying filters and checking boxes, make sure that the graphical tool, you've clicked the option, maybe go to another menu, come back, make sure that option is still checked. It has registered that you that has taken the action. Um, we've received reports from multiple students, multiple candidates, where after the exam, they have put in reports to Cisco, they report, they report that. Uh, there's the feedback feature in the middle of the exam where they say, this is not working as expected, it's that graphical interface. So just watch out for that. Just double check your work, make sure it actually took. That's where, we, that's where we see trip up a lot of folks. And if you miss the simulations, that's a large amount of points off of the exam. Double check that it took effect. Uh, kind of optional, last part here is the preparatory classes, ICN1, ICNU2. If you want to, uh, if you're looking at other training to build up to uh, give, lay some groundwork for INS, those two courses do the basic switching, routing, security fundamentals. Um, but if we're already a couple months out, you're probably, uh, I said a couple months from that, flip over to the new exams. So you're probably already went through that material, probably already have that background. You're just trying to get this cert in before the cutover probably hopefully already have some of that foundation. Now, as far as cost, it is 300 per attempt. That's coming from the Pearson View price list for the United States. Um, I included a link there. All these links uh, will have clickable after the video as well. We'll put those underneath so you can click them later. Um, but on that Pearson View price list, it's got 300, it's 300 bucks for the United States. Uh, you can look up other countries if you want to. And now what is the exam on? Right now, these exam topics, they've got the link there. These, this is pulling from Cisco's website, and we've got a couple areas. First off, we talk about security concepts. And so there, they're looking at the general idea of security, definitions, defense in depth, layered security, out of band management, just the big concepts, the big mentality about network security. Uh, when they talk about secure access, so look at remote access filters, look at port security, ASA versus firewall implementation, how to lock down the management of your devices. Uh, we also get into VPNs, all right, but precursor to VPNs, we talk about hashing, we talk about cryptography, uh, asymmetric, symmetric encryption, key sharing mechanisms like Diffie-Hellman, uh, some of the uh, Ike, the Internet Key Exchange. All that, all that goes into making VPNs work site to site, uh, remote, v, remote access VPNs, um, have how to verify tunnels. All right, it's a pretty decent lesson in there. Uh, we also talk about secure routing and switching. So there you're looking at tools like spanning tree protocol. You're looking at your routing protocols, how to lock those down because those are management protocols. They're man, they're, or we call them path determination protocols. They run in almost every network, and so they are a vector of attack for your malicious actors. So how to lock those down. It's not just our VPNs. It's not just edge security. We're all, this course, its exam, covers security within the network as well. Uh, they also start getting into firewall technology. Uh, we look at zone-based firewalls, inter interface-based firewalls, uh, working with both the ASAs as well as the Cisco routers. So looking at inbound, outbound, the, tr the trust levels, the inside, outside interfaces, <clears throat> how to configure that on the CLI and via the GUI. A uh, lot of configuration there in the class. When we, look, when we go through the course, we go through the labs, there's a lot of hands-on of actually configuring the firewalls. And so they do like to check you on that on an exam somewhere. We also talk about what an IPS is, your intrusion prevention system. Whereas with a firewall, we're mainly doing basic filtration, you know, what kind of traffic is, what, what's the application, uh, maybe source and destination protocol, port numbers, IP addressing, you know, your classic five tuple. Uh, IPS is where you start looking at more deeper inspection, not just where is it coming from, where is it going to, but really what is it? What's down in that layer seven header? What's the real payload? And then providing filtration based off of that. And finishing up, we talk about content and endpoints. So what the web security appliance as a dedicated appliance for, for filtering, for monitoring web traffic, all your HTTP, HTTPS traffic, the email security appliance, <clears throat> inbound, outbound, trying to provide that data loss prevention, creating uh, content filters, outbreak filters, spam filters, protecting all those different types of traffic, email and web traffic, 
So the most common traffic in your network, dedicated security there. Then endpoint, the client itself. There we have like AMP, the advanced malware protection. Um, a lot of lessons there and their topics. So it's a pretty full course, again, getting, going from the whole picture of security to security between sites, security inside your network, security down for the clients. It's pretty robust. Now, some recommendations. Uh, the exam topics there, again, we'll provide that link. Uh, if you want to dive more in depth there, actually, I'll, take, I'll show you that here in a second. But I want to start here with resources. All right, so these are my recommendations of what you should read, what might be helpful if you want to pass the exam, if you want to attempt the exam. So first off, you have the student guide in the INS course. If you have attended the INS course, then you've, in the Cisco Learning Space, uh, they've gone digital with all their books, you should have that digital copy of the INS student guide. And so read your student guide. I can't stress that enough. Reading through that student guide, reading through the whole thing at least once, maybe twice if you have time. Uh, going through, there's a couple self-test questions in there, checking yourself against the material. It is the book that the exam that, that was written for the course, and then we're gonna take the exam that's designed for that course. Yeah, there's a couple different teams involved in the book versus the course versus the exam, but they're all talking about the same topic. So that's a great source. There's also the official CERT guide. There's a Cisco Press, the INS 210-260 CERT guide. Now here's where it gets a little interesting. All right, next big tip and trick. If you read the reviews about the official CERT guide, you'll see that some folks really love it. Five stars, this book is great, it helped me pass the exam. They really recommend it. And then you'll see a one or two star review that says, this book is terrible. It doesn't have all the information that I need to pass the exam. Okay, so Cisco tells you what's on the exam. That's the exam topics we were just talking about. They tell you what the exam is going to be on. So if you read the student guide or you read the official cert guide and there's a topic on the exam that's not in that book, what they, what they are looking for you to do is research it, all right? As you get into the world of security, as you get into the world of cybersecurity, uh, one of those skills is the ability to look through multiple sources hunting for information, all right? And this is also not having all the exam information under one book also helps Cisco qualify for more uh, government standards of testing. So big recommendation, you can see there, check the updates. Let's take a look at it. Let's flip over here real quick. Let's go over to Firefox. So here's the CCNA Security 210-260 official cert guide. And you can buy the digital book, book plus the ebook bundle. And what I want to point you at is right here, there's the updates. Okay, and under the updates, there's an appendix here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Notice here it says exam updates. All right, let's take a look at what, what's uh, going on here. In these exam updates, what we're looking at is that Appendix B, this is all just publicly available. I'm not signed in anywhere. I got, you know, I'm in my, my Microsoft Word, but it's got information about next generation firewalls, next generation IPS devices, uh, firepower licensing, a uh, little uh, FTD, some more of the firepower information, updates, infrastructure, EEP, 8021X, private VLANs. Okay, these are the same topics that if you read some of those negative reviews, folks say are not covered in the book. So read a book, read either your student guide, read the official cert guide, read one of the, read both, but don't forget about the updates. Look for those extra white papers, those extra appendixes, this one especially, that covers what's on the exam. The next piece of material is the uh, from the Learn Network. We have, they provide the INS study material. Let's take a look here. On the Cisco website. Well, first off, those exam topics I was mentioning, all right, again, I'll provide this link. They give you the INS exam topics. You've got here the last date at test. Uh, you know, they got the exam topics here. So if we expand some of these, as I was mentioning, this is a pretty thorough course. It tells you under security concepts exactly what they're looking for. 
under secure access, what are they looking for? What do we cover in class under the VPNs? Where folks find maybe some extra topics is maybe uh, firewall technologies, firewall features in the ASA 9.x. All right, so some of those features might not be in your student guide, but they're probably in that appendix that we just looked at. All right, if they're probably in a Cisco white paper on the 9.x version of code for the firewall. All right, they're looking for that extra. All right, so that's gonna be your exam topics. Now for the study materials. All right, next thing to look at. So you read your student guide, you read that extra appendix, under the study materials, they give you additional links to read through on those topics. So for security concepts, the one with the shopping cart, they, you can see the, like the portal command guide, the complete video series. Those are some more books like, you know, there you go, their official study guide um, or the student guide. But the ones without the shopping cart, it's a link to an article on the Diffie Helm Exchange, a link to article on mitigating layer two attacks, secure access VPNs. So like, for example, let's take a look at the Diffie Hellman Exchange. <clears throat> we go here and it's a link, you got a PDF. You don't, uh, you have to log in to access the content. I'm not logged in right now, but just log in with your regular Cisco account and you can look at the PDFs, look at the files, and it gives you more about that. So if you're struggling to understand a concept, here they give you additional reading. And this is the recommended reading from Cisco before their exam, probably a good thing to go through before you attempt their exam, all right? Uh, and also here, there's the CBT Nuggets. Uh, CBT has their whole video series on the CCNA security. So uh, for those who are familiar with them, they do additional training, kind of like Sunset Learning. It's, a, it's in an, another source. So if you're looking for more analogies, more ways to explain the same topics that if the first time didn't work for you, that's fine. You can check out CBT as well. Um, we've got training on that in other courses. And the last part here, practice questions. We always like to test ourselves, right? So again, in that CERT guide and your, and your student guide, those have practice questions. So the CERT guide <clears throat> has two practice exams that come with it. And so that's nice to kind of go through the full exam to test yourself. The student guide just has challenge questions for each of the individual lessons and then the module review. So it's more testing against the content of the book versus testing for the exam itself. Either one's fine. Um, if you're at this point, you've probably already taken ICN1, ICN2, maybe already have your CCNA route switch certification, maybe just CCENT. You've probably seen at least one Cisco exam before. And so you're kind of, you kind of know about the, the phrasing of Cisco question they're looking for, the by the book answer versus what we do in the real world. All right, so you might be used to that already. So if you wanna have more practice with the exam format, obviously you got the practice, practice exams, but just for testing yourself against the material, the student guide questions are pretty sufficient. But yeah, so the CCNA security, the INS exam prep, let me make sure I didn't make it, miss anything here. Just can't stress that enough. So the two big warnings, the two big tips and tricks that I had, the simulator might have an issue, might not take your work. Make sure you click that button, make sure it takes effect. When it comes to the studying, read the books, but check what you read, what you've been studying against those exam topics. They tell you what they're going to ask you about. So if there's a top exam topic listed that you haven't been studying on, probably gonna see a couple questions about it. They give you the appendix, they tell you what to study, they give you those extra study materials. Make sure you read those, make sure you know those before you take the exam. All right, hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, good luck, we got only got a couple more months for this exam fails over or flips over, not fails over, flips over to the new CCNA security. So good luck with your exams.